Hello my friends, I'm Clover and this is Genuinely Approachable Sudoku. Today we're solving Philip Newman's um, May the 4th Star Wars Day tribute puzzle. Uh, <laughs> this has a couple of references to Star Wars in it, um, the most visually obvious being the crossed lightsabers made of a German Whispers line and a Renbon line and two palindromes. But also, um, and she picked up on this, give yourself a pat on the back, uh, this, the layout of Givens here is a reference to Philip's infamous Sudoku um, Tatooine Sunset, which is a classic um, that has been riffed on a number of times in Gas, actually. Uh, this puzzle should be quite a bit more straightforward than that, <laughs> but the iconic layout of Givens here is a reference to that classic Sudoku also by Philip which itself is a reference to the Star Wars franchise. So let's check this out. So we have normal Sudoku rules. That means we're placing the digits one through nine, ones each in each row, each column, and each outlined three by three region. And in addition to that, we have a green line in the grid. That is a German whisper line. So that means that digits that are adjacent to each other along the line, like these two digits, for example, have to have a difference between them of five or more. The red line is a red bond line. Uh, that line has to contain a set of consecutive numbers that can appear in any order. So for instance, they could contain uh, one, three, five, four, two, instead of one, two, three, four, five. As long as all of the consecutive numbers are there in the list, they can be scrambled up. These are both palindrome lines. Digits on a palindrome have to appear the same forward and backwards. In the case of these lines, because they're teeny tiny, they're just two cells each, that literally just means these two digits have to be equal and these two digits have to be equal because that's the, that's the only way they can read the same forward and backwards. And uh, as far as I'm aware, the blue digits here do not have any logical significance to this all. It's just for visual effect. So let's check it out. So we're going to start with the German Whisper line, because the only number that is far enough away from four to have a difference of five or more in a Sudoku is nine. Now digits that are at least five away from one in Sudoku are six, seven, eight, or nine, but we already have a six, a seven, an eight, and a nine in the column, so that has to be a six. Now if we look at this palindrome, Whatever digits can't be here also can't be here, and vice versa. So the digits that are ruled out are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9. So the only remaining possibilities are 1 and 7. However, if we were to put a 1 here, then our Renbon would have to consist of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Which begs the question, what do we put in this cell? It can't be a two or three, but those are the only two digits that we would still need on the red one. So this has to be a seven. Now there is a six right here because that's the only position we can put a six in in the bottom right region. And that's gonna be a one, two, three. And so we have a four, a five, and a seven on the red one already. Because the set of digits on the red has to be consecutive, we have to have the digits between four, five, and seven as well. Otherwise they would be consecutive. There'd be a gap in them. So we have to have a six, but the six can't go in column seven since there's already a six there. So that's gonna be my six. And now this is going to be either three or eight because we have to be going for either three, four, five, six, seven, or four, five, six, seven, eight. However, there's a three in column eight that rules three out of those cells. So three is going to be in one of these two cells in column seven. Therefore, that's not a three. That is, in fact, an eight. And with that, we have reduced this puzzle to a classic Sudoku. So let's keep moving. So in row four, we still need a five and a seven and a one and a two. The five and seven can't be in these cells because they appear in this region already. So this is going to be a five, seven pair. And our one and two are going to go here and here. That two is ruled out of these cells, placing a two right there. Now these three digits are going to be three, six, and nine to finish the region. Six is ruled out of these cells, so that's a six, that's a three, and that is a nine. And now in this column, we still need one and nine, which will go there and there. In this column, we need six and eight, which we can pencil in. And in this column, we need four, five, and seven. That's not a five. This can't be a four or seven, so that is our five. Now let's look at this row. We need one, two, three, and four because we have all of our high digits, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This can't be a three or four because those are already there. Now in this region, 
we still need 2, 3, 4, and 9. There's a 3 and 9 in this row already, so they're ruled out of those positions, and the 9 is ruled out of this position by the 9 in column 2. So that's a 9, that'll be a 3, and then these two cells will contain 2 and 4 in some order. Row 5 is almost complete, so now we're going to do a 4 and a 7 to finish row 5. And then these need to be 1 to 5 and 8. This now can't be a 3, because there's a 3 right there. In fact, in this column we need 1, 2, 4, and 5. And in this row we already have 1, 2, and 5, so this is a naked 4, which makes this a 7. Now row 2 is nearly done, so let's finish it off. We still need a 3 and an 8, so they're going to go there. And now this can't be a 3 anymore. You see we have this 1, 2 pair that's appeared in row 8. That'll give us a 4 there, and a 3 there. The 4 resolves the 2, 4 here. This can't be an 8 because we have an 8 in the column. In this column we need 1, 2, 5, and 9. That can't be a 9. That can't be a 5. So we have a 1, 2 pair, which give us a 5 and a 9 like that. Now, in where to next? Let's see. Um, we need a 3 in the top center region. We have a 3 right here and a 3 right here. That rules 3 out of those cells. 3 is already ruled out there, so this is going to be a hidden 3. Now we still need a 1, a 2, a 6, and a 7. The only position for 6 is there because this 6 sees the other cells. The only position for 7 is there, and so this is going to be a 1 or a 2. The 6 resolves the 6, 8. In this row we still need 1, 2, and 9. We have a 2 and 9 in this column already, so that's a naked 1. This is no longer a 1. In this column we still need an 8, and it can only go here because there's an 8 in this region. This has to be a 5 or a 7. This has to be a 2 or a 5. That's a 1, 2, and 1. We still need a 3 here, and we still need a 2, 5, and 7. This We already have a 2 and 7 in this row, so that's going to be a 5. That's going to be a 3. That makes this the 7 and makes this the 2. The 3 resolves this 1, 3 pair from earlier. We need a 4 and an 8 to finish off this row, which finishes off the 1 and 8 here. And we still need a 1 there and a 5 to finish the puzzle. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's dual sums. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. The link to check it out yourself is in the description below this video, and I will see you again in three days.